Hi, second grade. Welcome back to Reading Workshop. Today we are going to review precise words that authors use to help us to understand a story. So I have on the screen for you today a poster that should be familiar to you. I think you saw it last Friday. Um, and this is how authors paint pictures with words. So I want you to think about the two stories that I wrote yesterday. The first one I talked about being at a park. And then the second one was about my trip to the water park. We realized that my second story was much more precise. So let's take a look at some of the things that authors do to paint pictures with words. One thing is to describe the setting. If you think of my first story, I said I was at a park, but we had no idea what type of park I was at. The second thing that authors do are include sound words. Now, you're going to be seeing some sound words in a story that we're going to be reading in a few minutes and it really helps to add um, some expression and detail to the story. The third thing that authors sometimes do are use small actions, so small moments. We talked about in my second story going down that curvy water slide and eating a chocolate ice cream sundae with whipped cream and a cherry on top. And then another thing is lots of dialogue, lots of talking. And I'm sure that in a lot of the Razkiz books that you are reading, you're also seeing a lot of dialogue. Now I'm going to show you a sentence that I wrote, and I want you to think about whether or not it is precise. If you think it's precise, give a thumbs up. If not, you can give a thumbs down. So my sentence is, it was a nice day. So I see a lot of thumbs down, and you are correct. That's not very precise. You really don't know what I mean by a nice day. My opinion and your opinion on a nice day might be different. So what I had to do is I took this sentence and I changed it. Because I wanted you to picture in your mind, visualize what I thought a nice day was. Here is my next sentence. It was a warm and sunny day. Robins were singing sweetly on the firm branches of the maple tree while a soft breeze swirled in the air. That's something that you can visualize. You can picture it, you could close your eyes and you can imagine that warm sun on your face. You can hear the robins. You can feel that breeze swirling in the air. I wanted you to be able to picture what I thought a nice day was. So I want you to be thinking about all of those things that an author does to help you to be able to better understand a story while we take a look at a book called The Rain Stomper. Now, remember, I said there's going to be a lot of sound words in here. This is a really fun story to read. So after we read through it the first time, this is something you might want to go back and you can reread it along with me or you could mute the video and you could read it on your own. So this story is written by Addie Boswell. The Rain Stomper. On the first day of spring, Jasmine flipped out of bed. She twirled her baton. She swirled in her new red suit. Today was the day of the big, her big parade. All the children on the block would join in. Dancers, drummers, cheerleaders, dogs. Jasmine could already hear the neighbors cheering in the tata -ta tat boom. Now, just like when you're on Roz Kids, you can annotate or you can take notes on those books. I've done the same thing. So what I did is I wrote down, because I like to keep track of my reading, and I know that I'm thinking about words that authors use to make the book more precise, I added a little sticky note. So I wrote down the phrases twirled baton, because I know she didn't throw it up in the air. She is twirling it, she didn't hold it. I can picture that in my mind. And also when she put on her new red suit, she swirled. I could picture that. So sometimes authors use a word, a phrase, and sometimes it's even a complete sentence that is precise. 
She looks pretty excited there in her new red suit twirling that baton. Hmm, she's looking up. Think about the title. What do you think she might be looking at? Jasmine threw open her front door. Wind whistled through her hair. Thunder rumbled the ground. The sun scuttled behind the clouds. The sky twisted into a thick black coil. Now, I want you to imagine that you have an imaginary post-it and you have an imaginary pencil. I want you to write on your post-it with your pencil words or phrases that you find on this page that are precise, that you can picture in your mind. I will read this page one more time. Jasmine threw open her front door. Wind whistled through her hair. Thunder rumbled the ground. The sun scuttled behind the clouds. The sky twisted into a thick black coil. So you have your post-it. Let's see if what you wrote down on yours matches anything that I have on mine. So I used the words through open because I can imagine she didn't just peek out of her front door. She threw open her front door. Wind whistled, thunder rumbled, sun scuttled. Scuttled is a really good juicy word too. So I can imagine that it's probably nice and sunny out until all of those clouds start to come and that sun disappears. And then the last one I put sky twisted, but I really think that last sentence is very precise because the sky twisted into what? A thick black coil. Think of a spring or like a slinky. So this is a great example of a page that has a lot of precise words. So when you're reading, you can do the same thing. If you have a book in your lap or in your hands, you can jot things down on a post-it or on a piece of paper. Slap, clatter, clatter, slap. Rain poured down in buckets. Boom, while a boom, boom. Thunder rattled the bricks in the walls. You can add to that imaginary post-it as I read. Clink, clink, whoosh. The wind plunged her family back into their beds. Even the weeds slunk back into the earth. I know I would add several things to my post-it there. Jasmine hated the rain. It ruined parades. It silenced the horns and the drums. It tripped up the dancers and the dogs. It soaked new red suits. Mud puddler, Jasmine muttered. Tap, tippity, tap, tap. Cloud crasher, she complained. Clack, clickety, clack. Parade wrecker, she rumbled. Tap. Rattle, rattle, tap. Boom, walla, boom, boom. The rain roared. Bang, walla, bang, bang. The rain crashed. Bam, walla, bam, bash. The rain bellowed. Boom, walla, boom, walla, walla, boom. Hear those sound words? Jasmine stepped onto her stoop. She lifted her baton and shook it. Slap, clatter, clatter, slap. Rain slapped against the sidewalk. Boom, walla, boom. Thunder rattled the windows. Bam, walla, bam, bash. Jasmine shook her fist. She stomped her feet. Clatter, clatter, slap. She kicked the rain down her steps. Splish, splish, whack. She splashed it down the sidewalk. She chased the rain into the street. I am Jasmine, the rain stomper, she yelled. 
Jasmine stomped and splashed and skipped and shouted until children peered from their doorways. Their feet tapped kerplop, plop, plop. Their hands clapped kerplunk, plunk, plunk. Splash some more, Rain Stomper, they shouted. Splash higher, Rain Stomper, they yelled. Stomp bigger, Jasmine. Jasmine splashed more and higher and bigger. She spun, she shook, she even rat-a-tap-tap. The sun peeked out and beamed. The puddles shimmied. The children cheered. I think you might want to add something to that imaginary post-it. I love the puddles shimmied. More children poured out of their houses. They stomped and splashed and skipped and shouted. Then they drummed and whirled and flipped and twirled. Children flooded the street. Even the weeds came out. And so it was that Jasmine, the rain stomper, and her parade of puddle splashers out stomped the rain. Slap, clatter, bam, bash, boom, walla, bang, crash. So in that story, we had lots of precise words. We had a lot of sound words. We had a lot of actions that were happening. I know some of your post-its are probably full of all of those precise words. So we're gonna take a look at those sentences. And I have an assignment for you to do. I have three sentences. And I did not make them precise at all because that is your job. Your job is to take these sentences and in your notebook or on a piece of paper, wherever you're keeping your work, you're going to change these sentences and make them precise. So you might be able to do it in one sentence. Some of you might want to add several more sentences. So we have three, the dog ate a bone, the children played, and the book is good. So remember to also be logging into Raz Kids and reading every day so that your teachers can see all of the wonderful stories that you're reading, uh, the quizzes that you're taking, and seeing all of the progress that you're making. So I hope you uh, have a wonderful day and enjoy reading and writing those precise words. Bye, everyone.